Breaking news first at four, the steel bridge back open after a train derailment on the lower level closed it for much of the day. Yeah, we start with team coverage. Lisa Balick digging deeper into local safety and Joelle tracking the reopening progress on the steel bridge. This is Quinn 6 News at 4 o'clock. I'm Jenny Hansen. And I'm Todd Unger. Let's go straight to Joelle Jones. She is live tonight with a look at that crash and some updates from transportation officials. Yeah, that's right, Todd. This is developing very quickly. The steel bridge is now back open to all traffic, with the exception of this lower level track, which you can see here as crews are actively working to rerail this train car after it jumped the tracks, causing massive delays during this morning's commute. Now, Union Pacific chose to close the bridge and the corresponding section of the East Bank Esplanade to all traffic around 615 this morning when they say roughly five freight train cars derailed near the east end. The cars were empty, but Portland Fire and Rescue says at least two completely derailed, with one hitting the structural support column. The bridge is co-owned by Union Pacific and the Oregon Department of Transportation, whose reps say they were able to open the upper deck around 11 this morning following a thorough safety inspection. We had to make sure that all aspects of the bridge were safe. We had the safety inspectors looking upstairs on the bridge at the upper level to make sure that this derailment didn't cause any significant problems on the upper deck where the pedestrians and the bicycles and the cars use that level of the bridge. Now, TriMet says buses and MAX trains have now resumed service across the steel bridge, but the closure has caused delays this afternoon. And while Union Pacific says they have been cleared by engineers to open uh, train traffic along one of those two lower level tracks, Portland Fire and Rescue says the derailment continues to impact the bridge lift as well as river traffic along the, the Willamette. Now, Union Pacific says the cause of the derailment is still under investigations. Crews here at the crash site say that right now it's unknown how long it will take them to rerail this train. But of course, we will continue to track this closely. We'll have more for you on this at five and six. Live from the Steel Bridge, I'm Joelle Jones, Queen Six News. All right, Joelle Jones live tonight. As we mentioned, we have team coverage. We do. That derailment on the bridge that's more than a century old raises some safety concerns. In fact, we found out TriMet has looked into alternatives for those max trains that cross the bridge. Lisa Balick digging deeper into all this. She's live now. Lisa. Yeah, that's something long-term TriMet has been looking into. And as Joel mentioned, we don't know the cause yet. We don't know whether it was a bridge issue or a rail issue, and that's what's going to be determined. Now, this one thing we do know, though, is this bridge sees a tremendous amount of traffic, no question about it. In fact, we saw today finally an Amtrak train crossing over there late morning, outbound, heading down towards Eugene on that route. Now, after the bridge safety inspections and that derailment, TriMet Max back operating, as Joel mentioned, on the bridge. Cyclists and pedestrians we found as well. Union Pacific said a couple of years ago that it inspects this and other bridges twice a year. Now, 10 to 30 trains go across each year. TriMet says it has replaced and upgraded rails, switches, and other improvements four years ago on their portion, the upper portion that they rent from Union Pacific. And they tell me just recently there are close to 600 max trips across this bridge daily. Now, even though the bridge is 108 years old and gets repairs, it's getting extra inspections right now after that derailment. And I found out bridge inspections, though, may be changing changing nationwide. There's actually a move to, to push inspection to what's called a risk-based inspection, where inspection intervals may actually be longer than two years uh, based on uh, the chances of something bad happening for a particular bridge. And it might be shorter uh, for others that are at higher risk. And the reason he references that two-year mark, because for Multnomah County bridges, not this particular bridge, but Multnomah County bridges, they tell us they do full inspections every two years. Keep in mind, there are thousands of train derailments across the country each year, often caused by stuff that's on the tracks. And coming back here live, we'll be following this closely to see what Union Pacific says is the cause of this derailment and what other kind of repercussions are, how soon can they get that out of there, make any kind of changes they need to to be able to start using that bridge lift again. Back to you. Interesting, Lisa. Thank you. We will bring you updates on the steel bridge throughout the day and the week. You can always follow the very latest on coin.com.